building to help people who uh, work with work zones um, better understand how those work zones are impacting traffic um, and enable them to make decisions in real time about uh, any changes they want to make um, to how their work zones are managed. Um, so before I get into the um, actual specifics of the application we're designing, uh, who are we designing it for? Um, this was uh, uh, initially um, conceptualized by Maryland State Highway Administration, specifically the, uh, the planning department. They were working with um, some of their consultants who actually do their road work. Um, and they approached us and asked us to investigate this. Uh, and we worked closely with the I-95 Corridor Coalition. So they eventually got wind of this as well. Um, and they liked um, the direction the project was going. And uh, they used some of their funding that they've gotten from uh, the Federal Highway Administration's MCOM program um, to make what we were building for Maryland uh, something that would be useful for a much wider region, which is kind of cool. Um, so what is it we're actually building here? Um, the, the task that was laid before us was to uh, create a web application that can be used by the stakeholders in a construction project uh, to better ensure the safety of the construction crews and to minimize the impact that those work zones have on the traveling public. Um, so stakeholders is kind of a broad term. Um, it means pretty much everyone except for um, the traveling public, um, the, uh, the construction crew. Um, the things they were interested in learning about um, from this application was, you know, we are on scene, um, we're doing our jobs. Um, is the work we're doing and the traffic management that we've set up, is it actually becoming a problem for traffic rather than um, a uh, more of a safety precaution just for our crews? Because if it is, um, then it's actually going to uh, likely become more of a risk for the crew. Um, so uh, that's the team that's uh, down on the scene. Um, and then the other stakeholders, you have the uh, DOT operations staff. So these are the people um, actually on the, on the floor. Um, with a big CCTV wall uh, and a map showing everything going on in the region. Um, so they're looking at um, every event that's going on, not just construction. Um, so they're thinking in a more regional perspective, and they're interested in uh, learning if any of the work zones um, that are in their region are uh, becoming an issue for traffic. And how are the, uh, the incidents um, that are going on uh, on the uh, roads that feed towards the work zone um, going to impact traffic? So maybe they can make uh, preventative actions uh, so that uh, the crews down there remain safe. And then you also have the planners at the Department of Transportation, and uh, they're more interested in the, the after-the-fact sort of thing. Uh, so they want to know um, if the projects that they've conceived and executed upon are having the desired impact on uh, the, the traveling public. So if, uh, one year, uh, the year before we decided to do a uh, traffic project, you know, speeds during peak period of 25 miles per hour, um, and then afterwards, uh, speeds you know, got more normal uh, than a traveler could actually appreciate. Um, but during that intermediate period where they're actually doing the construction, speeds were 10, 15 miles per hour. Um, they're going to have to actually uh, work a little bit to justify the, the uh, actual uh, construction project that they did in the first place. So they're going to want to get some uh, metrics on that. And then, of course, how, just how successful were they in managing a work zone over time? Um, so day to day, um, is, uh, is the traveling public actually encountering problems on this road? And are we actually making efforts to, to improve that? Uh, so how do each of these groups intend to use this project? Uh, so during the uh, initial meetings we had, uh, the uh, representatives from the consulting companies told us that uh, what they wanted to do was they wanted to have um, their manager that was actually on site and the construction um, of the work zone uh, would actually have a laptop with them and they would uh, want to use that to um, connect to our application and uh, monitor the conditions. Um, and uh, the application would be fed by data we're already collecting, so um, incident and event data from uh, the various agencies that provide it, um, speed data from uh, uh, INRICS and, and uh, other probe providers and uh, detectors uh, measuring speeds and volumes as well, um, and use that to make intelligent decisions about how they wanted to uh, 
uh, go about uh, their construction work, they'd be able to open or close uh, additional lanes and that sort of thing. And then as um, we uh, sat down with them um, in future sessions, they kind of uh, backtracked on that and said, no, we, we, we're kind of busy when we're on the scene. We don't actually want to be looking at a laptop and monitoring conditions. Um, we'd rather um, you get there in the morning, uh, set an alert in the system, and get a notification if conditions have um, fallen below a certain threshold so that we know that we need to take preventative action then, uh, rather than uh, having to constantly monitor the application to see if that particular threshold was met. So this could be a, a speed-based alert. Um, it could be an alert um, for an accident in the region, something like that. Uh, the operations uh, team, uh, what they wanted to do uh, was basically to help the uh, construction folks to figure out what their alerts uh, should be set at. Because uh, they're the ones who are familiar with how the road should perform, and they have the performance goals that they're trying to meet. Um, so they can advise the construction crews on to uh, when they should be uh, making adjustments to how they're doing their traffic control. And um, a couple of um, bullet points and kind of the negative side of things. Um, if the, the work crew is not uh, meeting expectations, the operations staff um, would like to be able to use this application to justify things like uh, revoking uh, a permit that uh, the construction crew might have that's uh, giving them the ability to uh, make more decisions out on the roadway, um, close lanes, um, that sort of thing. Or to uh, justify rescheduling construction. If um, they're having an impact um, during peak period um, and they could actually assign a dollar amount uh, to that impact, uh, they could use that to justify maybe offsetting the the schedule um, so that they don't have so much of an impact anymore. And then for the planners, um, this is basically um, kind of the same thing I mentioned before. They, they really do just want to analyze the efficiency of the work zone and justify the money spent on a project. So to basically get a, uh, a dollar amount on how much the, uh, the work zone is costing them and the traveling costs. Um, so going into the designs we've actually put together, uh, for uh, this particular project. Uh, so what you're looking at here um, is RIDIS. Um, if you've seen it before, this should look familiar. This is kind of the landing page. This is a, the incident list. If you've not seen it, um, you can stop by the, the Cat Lab booth. Um, we can show you this. Um, this is a mock-up. So this is what it's going to look like um, in the future once this is uh, out there. Um, the majority of this is what you'd see now if you were to log in. You have uh, the location of um, every event in the system, uh, the type with a little badge that indicates um, what it is. So our work zones are colored in orange there with a little shovel guy. Uh, we have the lane conditions, a little descriptive text if it was provided, and then three buttons uh, on the right there in the majority of cases. cases. So uh, one to show the location on a map, another to open up the chat room to talk about the, uh, the event uh, in question, a button to open up the timeline for the event, and uh, for each of the work zone ones, you'd now have that button there, the little cone, that would open up uh, this, what we're calling a single work zone dashboard. Um, so what you're seeing here, uh, kind of in the center, is a snapshot of the roadway um, where the work zone is taking place. Uh, up there in the blue, you'll see the actual work zone location. And it might be a little hard to see right now, um, but there are traffic cones that demarcate uh, which lanes are actually uh, closed at the moment. Um, along the sides, you'll see the uh, posted speed limit signs. Uh, that uh, gray box up there with the beacons, that's a DMS. So you could mouse over that and see uh, what's actually posted on that sign. Hopefully it's a notification that there's a work zone in progress and uh, right lanes closed. And then we have a map here, so you can get the uh, perspective of the uh, road geometry, how that looks, and some controls on the uh, top left there to show um, on the map and on the uh, road snapshot here uh, the different layers you want to show. So we could toggle on and off the work zone bounds, the posted speeds, and so on. We have two little uh, numeric steppers there that allow you to uh, look uh, by toggling uh, miles upstream and downstream, this uh, road
room diagram would expand and contract, contract so you could get a closer in view of the uh, work zone location itself or a wider view to see how that work zone is uh, impacting the rest of the roadway. And then a couple links to um, some project specific documentation so you can see how long the project is going to run and look at the permits that the, uh, that the consulting company actually has. Hey Michael? Yes? Are you generating that, that picture programmatically with code or is that a graphic? Uh, what I'm showing here is um, mostly designs. Um, we actually pitched recently to the group who was, was doing this. Um, the diagram in the center here, that is uh, still, um, that's a placeholder image. Okay, um, but the charts on the right there um, and the map, um, that's all actually based on real data. Um, and uh, top right there you have a uh, chart. Um, the green line represents the average conditions uh, over time. Um, for a particular day, so that's a, basically a historical average, um, and the orange represents the conditions during the current day. So basically you're interested in the delta there, because um, that indicates how much you've deviated from normal conditions, um, all other things being equal, because of the work zone that, that's being run right at that time. Uh, each of the uh, seven charts below that larger one represent the previous seven days, uh, so you can see how uh, you know, peak periods during the weekdays might differ from what's going on on the weekend and that sort of thing. Michael? Yes? Uh, how is the user delay cost calculated? I mean, is there some state sanctioned costing? Yeah, so um, TTI, um, we actually use their methodology, Texas Transportation Institute, um, based on um, AABT, Average Annual Daily Traffic. Um, which allows us to basically say for this particular hour, uh, during this particular day, in this particular month, these are what the expected volumes would be. And then we use uh, real-time probe data, um, the speeds, to figure out uh, how many vehicles are going through based on the, the AABT paired with the uh, speeds they're going through at to compute cost. Uh, so the uh, the table here um, is showing uh, user delay cost. Um, we have the uh, last seven days down the uh, vertical, and then bin into uh, I think we got what four hour increments there. Um, yeah, we have the uh, the hours of the day. Um, so at the bottom uh, row, we have for uh, each bin, each hour bin um, across the uh, week what the cost was um, in, in user delay. Um, and then across the rows, we have the total cost for each day. Uh, and color-coded, obviously, based on the, uh, the total cost. So the eye quickly goes to uh, the hours where conditions were particularly unfavorable. And then in the bottom corner there is the total cost uh, over the time period we're looking at. Um, a, little, a little interactivity here. Uh, open up the drop down at the top there. Um, so the previous screen it was Q length we were plotting on the uh, on the charts there. I've swapped it out for uh, travel time here. So the vertical axis is uh, now based on how long it's going to take the vehicles to go through the work zone, and we can now compare that um, from the orange to the green again and see what that difference is. And uh, for construction projects where we're uh, on the uh, right side of the, uh, the left side of the road, uh, we might have um, conditions affecting um, the opposite side of the road. Um, so we allow them to, to toggle between whether or not they're looking on uh, the side of the road where the work zone is actually um, implemented or um, the opposite side. Uh, as you roll over, as you roll your mouse over the graph, you get a little tooltip that says uh, what the, the data point you're looking at is. And all of the different graphs are linked together. Uh, so you can see the little uh, data points highlighted there and see if your, uh, your current conditions are deviating from uh, the previous seven days at all there. And then uh, likewise, I can toggle what's shown in the uh, user delay cost uh, table. So I can look at total user delay, delay cost um, or swap out for a per user delay cost. So basically dividing off by the volume, um, 
for uh, taking the cost out of it, uh, I can look at total delay in minutes or total delay in minutes per user. And then mousing over an individual cell here would show uh, basically uh, those four values, but spelled out specifically for that cell. And uh, that was basically the, uh, the plan of attack for the uh, single work zone uh, situation. For, so for those uh, people on scene, uh, and for the uh, operators who are interested in uh, drilling into a work zone. Um, this is what we're planning for uh, the operators who are going to be looking at it from a more regional perspective. Uh, this is basically a configurable dashboard. So you'll notice there's a button in the top right where you can add a new panel. I've got one, two, three, four panels on the screen right now. Um, one is a user delay cost um, uh, widget, basically. Uh, we've got a map of all of the active work zones and two different lists. Uh, one is, uh, you'll notice in the, the top of each of these list panels, there is a uh, group by uh, option. This one is grouped by region, so we're seeing a hierarchy of the regions we're looking at here on the table on the left, and on the table on the right, we're grouping by the uh, severity rating that the, the DOT has assigned each uh, construction event. And uh, the little gear icon that you see in the top right of each panel will allow you to uh, toggle what is shown there. So for the uh, list-based ones, this would allow you to toggle which uh, columns are shown in the table. Um, we're working with the, uh, the DOTs to figure out um, what options they actually need here to uh, make the most intelligent decisions about how they're, um, they're managing their work zones. Uh, as far as the uh, notification goal um, that we have to, to get the people on scene, um, the information when they need it and no sooner, um, they'll have uh, this little interface here. They basically fill out a form saying when they want to be notified. Uh, we work with them to figure out what conditions uh, were the ones they were interested in, uh, and this is what we came up with. Uh, they wanted to be notified when an accident happened uh, near the work zone, so within a configurable number of miles, either upstream or downstream, because they care um, either way. Um, uh, we have an uh, established bottleneck um, tracking formula that we use um, in some of our tools. Uh, so they wanted to know specifically when a bottleneck condition was occurring. Um, so we provide a link out to that definition there uh, in case they've forgotten. Um, and then just a straight up speed threshold. So they'll, they'll want to know when conditions are um, becoming uh, completely deteriorated and when they've uh, re-achieved an acceptable level. So they can configure that there as well. Uh, and then obviously options on how they want to be notified. Um, so via email, <coughs> message, or for those who are actually going to stay at their computer, a in-app notification. Um, and then of course, uh, we've put together a little interface to allow them to choose when they want to be notified. So you would populate this with uh, when your work zone is active, because obviously if you're uh, monitoring the work zone, you don't really need to know about it when it's not there. Um, and then you hit next, and you would uh, then get your email or text message um, letting you know when conditions have uh, reached your thresholds. Uh, so that's uh, where we are now. Um, we're looking to get uh, an actual usable prototype to our clients um, sometime early next year. Um, and we're excited to see where we can go after that. Question? Any questions, anyone? <clears throat> On one of the uh, earlier slides, you were looking at uh, some detail of the activities, one of which showed an accident. In the design of any of this, uh, was there anything specifically focused on uh, reduction or elimination of worksite accidents to the crews that are out there themselves in terms of speed limits or monitoring or, the, you know, other data around preventing, reducing accidents for the workers? Uh, that, that was definitely a, a consideration. It's, it's uh, the, uh, the safety um, office at Maryland State Highway was the one who initiated this, so they were concerned about the safety of their construction crews. Um, but in terms of um, actually reporting on that, um, no, there's nothing actually built into the system for that, at least not as designed. Did you have one? I, I just, one of the salts 
slides it looked like it was web based and then it, so all of a sudden the address bar disappeared. Is oh, it yeah. like a software or is it all web based? It's it's all web based. I just stripped out the the browser bevel for I just the little the menus screenshots. when they popped up it looked kinda like maybe it was like a software or something. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about dealing with Q measurements during the work zone? Uh, yes, so the, uh, the bottleneck uh, formula I, I mentioned that is actually uh, not only tracking um, the point where a bottleneck is happening, but the Q behind it as well. Can they set alerts to say when the Q reaches a certain point? Uh, not as designed, but that is probably something we should approach with them. Yeah, they, they, they said we want to know when there is a bottleneck that our work zone is involved in, so it's in the queue, but uh, not mention a particularly long bottleneck. It's something we should take back to them. I got another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is all using Maryland data. How easy do you think it would be to say use, if Texas gave you, is it a certain format? I mean, how easily could you take it from Maryland and say implement it in Texas? And I'm not making a sales pitch, I'm just saying how easy do you think it would be? Uh, it depends on um, how similar the data is that, that Texas would be able to provide. Um, Maryland by far gives us the, the richest data set. We, they are the client we've worked with the longest, so we've managed to hook into the most number of their systems. Um, so if we're um, able to push something out for another agency that maybe has a, you know, they haven't given us their DMS data, so we strip out that feature, but we make everything else available, that's something we do. It's mostly based on what <coughs> we're able to get. Yes? What, what sort of challenges do you think might be in, in play uh, if you were looking for functionality, like you've got your iPhone, if you've got GPS, and what if you set like some bubble limit? You know, like if I'm a, if I'm driving and approaching a mile within some, you know, delay to get notified. What have you talked about or thought about? What kind of for, like what would it take to get that type of interactive in place? So you wouldn't necessarily have to type in a time when you expect to be driving, but maybe a, a little two mile bubble of you're you're going to be in deep doo doo. Yeah. So there are actually a couple presentations. Um, and tomorrow, I know Michael Pack is giving one where he's going to specifically talk about this. Um, but there are actually applications out there that basically do that.